and welcome to the third part of this HDR video tutorial. In the last part we showed you how to combine three bracketed images to create our 32-bit HDR file. We then OK'd that and took that through to Photoshop where we have it displayed now. At the moment there's only a few adjustments we can make to a 32-bit image so what we're going to do is save that down and then we're going to convert the 32-bit into an 8-bit image ready for printing or uploading to a website. So to do this we're going to first of all save down the file and if we go to File, Save As, then from the menu just make sure that you picked for the format Radiance.HDR. As default it'll probably sit on Photoshop which won't be a 32-bit image so you need to go down to Radiance.HDR, make sure that's selected and then just click Save. Once you've done that you're ready to start with your 8-bit conversion so to do this we're going to go up to Image, Mode and just select 8-bit channels and after a few seconds we'll get up the HDR conversion dialog window. So just move that over there so we can see what's going on. Now the four different methods, first one is exposure and gamma and this basically enables us just to adjust the exposure and gamma within the image. Now, now it does what it does, um, so if you increase the exposure, you increase the exposure within the image. Likewise, if you decrease it, everything gets darker. And if you adjust the gamma, that adjusts the mid-tone range. So with a little bit of playing around, you can actually get some moderately okay results, but they'd still need quite a lot of uh, adjustments within Photoshop afterwards. The next one down is highlight compression and this just compresses the highlights values within the HDR image so they basically fall within the value ranges of an 8-bit and 16-bit image so you're just cutting down the amount of uh, information within the image to fit within the constraints of the new bit rate. Below that we've got equalize histogram now this works pretty well and actually increases the contrast of the midtones quite nicely also gives a little bit of a boost to your shadows and your highlights um, and if you're trying to do just a very quick HDR conversion you can use this and then just use levels or a layer mask just to sort it out and get a really quite good HDR image. Now the last one and the one that we're going to take a look at is local adaptation and this all gets a little bit complicated as it uses curves in order to adjust the shadow values and the highlight values. So once you've selected local adaptation, first of all we have the radius and the radius slider basically specifies the size of the local brightness regions. So that of the sky, the mid-tones such as the building and the more shadowy areas down here by the river and underneath the bridge. The threshold slider basically specifies how far apart two pixel values need to be before they're no longer part of the same brightness region. So if we increase that we can suddenly see a little bit of haloing going on around the edge of the building. So you need to adjust that so the pixels when they change brightness regions start to merge in. So the higher you do it the more likely you are to get a bit of haloing. So if I put that right up to 4 and we start to see a little bit of haloing. If I increase the radius up to about um, 200 and you'll really start to see some haloing going on around the tops of the buildings and a few other strange things going on almost polarizing down here in the water. So we're going to take our radius down to about 100 which is just a nice medium and our threshold we're going to reduce down to about 1.5 which should help just to reduce and take out any haloing that's going to happen around the tops of the buildings. With the easy part done we now look at the toning curve and histogram. So the toning curve is a line across the middle. Histogram is this graphical piece in the middle of the graph and basically that shows all the tonal information within the image. Now the two gradiented lines on the left and at the bottom of the screen basically denote the input shadows and input highlights and on the left hand side the output shadows and the output highlights. So what we can do if we've got a shadow region say down here in the underneath the bridge 
you can just use the pipette which is automatically selected just drag the pipette um, around that area with our mouse left mouse button clicked and we suddenly see a little preview circle running up and down the curve line so we know that that area of the graph is responsible for this area of the picture so if we want to just lighten that area up a little bit we can click onto the curve line which will make a point and then if we just increase that curve line we suddenly see the entire image lighten up and we've now got quite a nice lot of detail just under here in the bridge unfortunately we've pushed the rest of the image a little bit too far so now what we need to do is just to pull our midtones back down so we're getting a nice exposure for the entire building if we just click with our pipette again so we can get a preview on the curves line of the tonal information on the bridge we see that's pretty much dead center we again click and make a selection and then just start to pull that down and we can see that's just darkening down all of those midtones again now if you want to increase the actual contrast of any area what you can do is make a little point on each side of uh, say the midtones and then if we just drag that in just slightly and we get a slight increase in midtone contrast so what you need to do is keep on adding a few points in until you've got an image which might look a little bit dull but has a really good amount of information so you've picked out all of the shadow information underneath the bridge you have sort of just taken the edge of some of the highlights say down here in the river and in the sky you've just brought in a little bit more um, definition so you've really sort of pulled those highlights down and pulled out a lot of the detail in the sky now if you take a quick look at that histogram we can actually see that the histogram finishes about two squares in so what we can do is if we just move the output value just along a little bit just to meet up with sort of the edge of our histogram and then we can just pull in one of the sliders and we can suddenly see we're starting to get a much more dramatic sky and that's not really affecting the rest of the image so what we've got now is quite a nice dramatic sky we've got a good tonal range going throughout all the midtones we've actually increased the shadow areas and we've got a good um, foreground here with the actual weir so to complete our HDR conversion into 8-bit we just click OK and once it's converted into 8-bit we'll then apply a shadows and highlights uh, effect and also hue saturation just to boost the colors a little bit and then do a few adjustments with levels just to add that little bit of impact